swamped with a whole bunch of rose hip pulp that we have squished. We need to make stuff with it, so we've been making fruit leather, and now we're going to can some. So we have our jars heating up in the oven. We have about three-fourths of a cup of organic cane sugar, and a teaspoon of salt, Himalayan pink salt, and about and a couple tablespoons of cinnamon. We're going to stir that all together. You could add nutmeg, cardamom, or even not add any spices at all. If you need to add some water to make the consistency more desirable, then you may do so. This is about boiling. Alive. We want it good and hot so that it seals well. Now we're going to take our jars out of the agam. You need to have a clean seal on the top. Clean hot lids. And there you have your rose hip butter. Perfect for muffins and pancakes and anything else that you want to put them on. But it's also just good by the spoonful. We have not lacto-fermented rose hips before, so this is a trial and you will see how it turns out. We are doing it kind of the way you would do applesauce. So this is to make a quart of rose hip butter. And it's going to be more tart because this isn't very sweet. We have a teaspoon of pink Himalayan salt. You want a good quality salt so it doesn't mess with the lacto-fermentation. Sugar for the culture to eat because this is not very sweet. About two tablespoons of organic cane sugar and about a tablespoon of cinnamon and you need some sort of good uh, bacteria to introduce to it so it can start fermenting properly and here we have some water kefir you could also use whey from your cheese making or kombucha those all work great so we're going to stir that all together we're going to taste it now it's not going to be very sweet Tastes like rose hips. We're going to put it in our clean quart jar. And wipe the lid clean. You want a good inch of space so that it, the cultures can breathe properly. And you put your lid on, not too tightly. And we're going to leave it at room temperature for about two days so that the cultures can get going at eating the sugars. So we're just gonna let it sit out and we will be back. After two days at room temperature, we will transfer this rosehip butter into the refrigerator or into a really cool storage where it will keep for at least a couple weeks, if not a couple months. So this is day two of our rose hip butter fermenting and it looks like it's doing pretty good. We are going to transfer it into the refrigerator now and keep it there for a few weeks if we don't eat it by the end of that time.